Well, then in 2022, the miniseries Blackbird comes out, which is based on your whole experience. And like we mentioned many times throughout, right. this was played, you know, your character was played by Taron Edgerton. Right. You know, who's had a very prolific movie career. Uh, yep. He was in um, The Kingsman. He Elton was John, in. Uh, Robin yeah, Hood. He played Elton John. He Robin was in that Hood. New, uh, Robin Hood, the new Hood? Tetris movie. Billionaire Boys uh, Club. And so forth. <laughs> right. It's actually kind of amazing. I didn't realize that he was British yeah. until I started watching some interviews because he plays an American, you, <laughs> without, hey, you, you know, know even knowing even... there's an accent. Yeah. Do you know the history of all this? Uh, yeah. Well, originally, uh, Brad Pitt's, uh, company purchased the rights, uh, to this movie. Paramount bought it. Paramount Motion Pictures bought it. Brad Gray, he used to be the president of, of, uh, Paramount. He bought five of my movies. Actually, I still have other Mm. ones. We, we were supposed to start filming another one called American Sparkle in June of this year, but because of the strike, that's postponed right now. But yeah, Brad Pitt was going to play me. He was signed. Jeff Bridges was going to play my dad. He was signed. Johnny Depp was going to be the serial killer. He was signed. Scorsese was directing. So Brad Pitt's like, Jimmy, look, I got a good writer of my own. We can bring my writer in. Now, this is after three or four 18-month periods. So you're looking at six, seven years in development. So Brad brings in his writer, uh, Daniel Futterman, who wrote Enough with J-Lo. So he comes in. and. Futterman is a good guy. I really like him. And he wrote a really good script. It was took him about 18 months. So, you know, now we're up to nine years, you know. And when we all read the script, it was good, but it was completely unrecognizable to the real story. So Brad Pitt and everybody asked me, they said, well, what do you think? Do you want to use this script? And I said, look, man, at the end, Jimmy gets killed. So how am I going to be on interviews with everybody? And how I got killed was Larry gets out of prison. He goes back and joins the Colonial War games, right? And he's got a musket with a big uh, spear on the front. And me and him get in a fight, and he gets me with the spear and kills me, you know? So I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's going to be a realistic show. So so we shelved it. Then HBO came along, and HBO wanted to buy it and do a Sopranos-type series, um, which I was cool with. Um, and they talked some really big numbers, so I was very happy about that. We got over to HBO, AT&T within nine months bought HBO and Warner Brothers. The president and vice president of HBO, who had been there since the early 80s, did not like the new management or something. I don't know what the deal was, but they left and they went over to Apple and they said, will you go to Apple with us? I said, actually, I'm going to go back to Paramount. So I was on my way back to Paramount and then they got me to go over here to Apple and now we had to find that, you know, Brad Pitt was not going to be able to play a 28 year old anymore. So they were like, Hey, you know, we got all these younger guys. What do you think of these names? And they laid some names on me and they go, we really like Taron Edgerton. What do you think of him? I'm like, Oh, he, he's too small. He wouldn't be realistic in the, in the, in the part. So they get a hold of Taron and Taron's like, tell him that I'll get as big and muscular as him. And if I do, is he cool with it? And he did, you got to give him credit. I mean, the guy got yeah, he, got yeah he, he was he was ripped in that he was, series. He, was buffed. he got ripped, so he looked realistic. You know what I mean? You can't go into one of these madhouses with all these crazy killers and be a small guy. You know they get cannibalized in there. You know, so Taryn pulled off the part really well. I mean, I've got old friends of mine that go clear back to high school. They get a hold of me like, Jimmy, man, he's got your walk down. He's got your talk down. He's got your head motions down. I'm like, okay, didn't know you remembered all that from high school, but okay. You yep. know? So that's pretty cool. All right. Well, ultimately, uh, Blackbird got nominated for three Golden Globes. And character who played Larry, Paul Walter Hosser, actually won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor. Um, so congrats, you yeah. know. And it also got nominated for two Critics' Choice Awards. So ultimately, you know, and everyone I saw really loved the series, including myself. So congratulations. And it, got award- on- it got nominated for two SAG Awards after that. Then oh, it okay. Got- didn't know that. Then it got nominated for the Apple series or the uh, Rotten Tomatoes series of the year. And mm. now we just got nominated for four Emmys just last week. Wow. Just last week. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. And it's a Taren- great series. For, for everyone who hasn't seen it yet, go to Apple Apple TV and pull it up. It's, it's very, very well made, very well produced. Yep. And, uh, you know, because originally when, when 
the interview got got pitched to me, I was like, ah, I don't know. But I'm like, well, let me go watch the series. And right, let me, you know, right. let me actually give it a real, right. you know, a real look. Right. And after watching the series, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I want to do this. Yeah. No, they did an excellent job with the series. Um, you know, Dennis Lane, he's a great writer. Dennis, you know, he, Mystic River, Shutter Island, um, Gone Baby Gone. These are all his other shows. Uh, wrote was a uh, staff writer for HBO for Boardwalk Empire, The Wire. He's you know he's been around as a writer, and Dennis you know he collaborated in a very fair way with me through the whole process, and uh, you know we came out with a nice product in the end. I personally think they should have let a little bit more of the realistic stuff in, like the phone thing and. You know, I came back to my cell one night and this big giant biker was in my cell and he wanted to try and kill me in my cell and I had to fight him off too. I mean, crazy stuff happened, you know. So, but I guess when you look at it from like a writer's point of view, it, it gets convoluted if you put too much of that in. So yeah. I get it, you know, but I'm just happy everybody loves it. I'm happy that I'm out of the whole situation. My record was clear. I have nothing on my record, man. I mean, and I, you know, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I was I was interviewed by uh, one interviewer for a big newspaper story, uh, front page story of the Chicago Sun Times, and the guy was great, great interview. I mean, it was a great interview. And at the end, he goes, "You know, Jimmy, he goes, you seem like a real happy guy, you know, real fun, cool, down to earth guy." And he goes, and and that kind of throws me off. I go, well, what do you think? I'm supposed to sit here and be sad the rest of my days because I went through a trauma with the serial killer thing? I go, that shit's over, man. It's behind me. I I let things be in the past. You know, so I live in the moment, man. I live in the moment and too much in the future sometime, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a happy person and life turned out great, you know, so I don't have to ever go back to the crime world in my life again. I'm making movies in Hollywood now, you know, and it's, it's cool. You know, I have, you know, we're talking in talks for season two right now with Blackbird. I've got the other one I just told you about American Sparkle. We're supposed to be start filming. I'll have a book out for American Sparkle. I just released my other new book, The Chicago Phoenix, just about a month ago, which will be the material and the fodder for season two of Blackbird. So a lot of cool things are happening, you know, and that's how life's supposed to be. Cool things and fun things are happening, you know, so. Well, that's what it is. Jimmy Keene, definitely appreciate you sitting down and sharing your story. And thank you so much for keeping a monster like Larry Hall still in prison. Thank you, man. I appreciate um, you saying that. You know, that. I, I've interviewed a lot of different people over the years. I've interviewed murderers uh, and so forth. But I kind of draw the line when it comes to, to rapists and people who kill kids and yeah, so forth. You know, I mean, I've interviewed, I've interviewed like Sammy the Bull and Hitman and stuff like that, but I yeah. feel in situations like that, it's it's a war with other soldiers who right. all are aware about what's happening and so forth. But right. when it comes to people like this, I don't really want them on my platform. I don't want to have anything to do with them. I feel like they're disgusting human beings. And Larry, Larry Hall was one of those. The and I'm glad beat. that he's exactly where he needs to be. Yep. I'll be even happier when he's actually dead. But for now, I I'm okay with him being in prison, unable to harm any other little girls out there. I agree. There. You got to remember, Vlad, you, I said it earlier, when somebody's a kid killer, little girls, 12-year-old girls, yeah. come to me, I'll do it for free. I don't, you don't even have to ask me. I will help. You know, I, yeah. I don't have to be in a, a predicament I was in to make that decision to help. I will help because these are sick people that need to be out of society. They can't be loose in society, Agreed. you know? So I appreciate you saying Agreed. that, man. That was big. Agreed. Well, Jimmy King, man, uh, thank you for everything. And I'm looking forward to your next projects that are coming up. Cool. Thank you, lad. So appreciate it, it, brother. Peace. Later.